want to review the strength and conditioning classes uh, so we have a better understanding or a good understanding of how to get the most out of these classes. You know, I, when we developed this program, now, you know, the exercises you're doing, I did not create. But I created the structure for the UBC, in other words, the order of the exercises, and also I developed the double time uh, portion. Uh, we call it the Ultra Blast. Uh, the Ultra Blast really is kind of a unique aspect of the strength and conditioning. I mean, it's the only time I've seen where uh, we actually try to focus or someone actually tries to really pinpoint the muscle and uh, take it to failure. Now, I'd like to go ahead and go through each exercise and go over areas that seem to be uh, misunderstood. First one, uh, the very first exercise, is the chest fly. Now, the chest fly, of course, is the double foot anchor. You want to make sure when you do the chest fly, you're working the chest. So you're making basically a 90 degree bend in your arms. And the thing is, the biggest uh, mistake with this exercise is people will end up doing a bicep curl. They'll do this motion. When it's not that at all, it's more like an uppercut. You want to keep your body and your arms bent in the 90, and you want to thrust forward as your elbows come forward and then back to your hips. Forward and back to the hip. That squeezes the chest. So what I'm also working on, if you look again, watch the difference. I'm not doing this. I'm squeezing forward. Squeezing forward. Another misconception on a lot of these exercises is when do we do the double time? What should be the range of motion or the ultra blast? When we do the ultra blast, we want to come all the way up on this particular exercise, halfway down, then all the way back up again. So we're completing the exercise. We're completely flexing the exercise, but only coming back halfway on the stretch. So this would be the double time on the chest fly. All right, let's continue on focusing on the chest. Again, when we do the strength and conditioning classes, we always start with the large muscle groups first, chest, back, shoulders, triceps, the biceps, and the upper body. So we're continuing on the chest with the push-ups. Now, if you are not able, and instructors who are watching this, you need to tell this to your students, if they are not able to do 36 full body push-ups, or 32, excuse me, full body push-ups all the way down and way up, there's no reason to utilize the band. Because again, the goal is for the muscles to fail. If they're already failing doing regular push-ups, why in the world do you want to you know, go with the cumbersome of, of having to deal with the band? So let's go ahead and focus. So those of you, now instructors, even if you have to do these on your knees, you should be utilizing the band as a demonstration and a motivation for your students. So first of all, palm out. You want to bring it back, and I like to have the I elbows get, go inside the band like so. All right, and then from there, it's just a push-up. Now, a couple things to worry, think about when you do your push-ups. Really want to avoid the student leading with the head. This is so common, okay? We want the chin not up, but just making sure the, the back is, is straight down and up. The first thing that should be touching the ground, if anything touches the ground, is the chest. And of course, we go all the way down, all the way up as we do it, just like we would do in our fitness evaluation. So again, instructors out there, you need to get used to using the band. Even if it's just the yellow, you're demonstrating what they, your student, should be trying to do. And again, if the student's not able to do 32 full body, that's up on the toes, because once the body fatigues, they can always just drop down to their knees. But if they can't do 32 full body push-ups, they don't need the band. Okay, continuing on with the chest, in fact, we're focusing now on the upper chest with the long tube incline press. Mistakes I see on this particular exercise. One is not a deep enough stance. You see a lot of people will kind of get lazy and be more in this motion. This is more of a uh, shoulder press, and we're not really working the, in, the upper chest is what we're trying to focus on. Now, anytime you do chest muscle, you're gonna work the shoulders uh, a, a certain amount, but to get the chest, you have to do a proper incline, which means you have to get a good deep balance, a deep stagger step. So the student needs to be more in this position so that the, when I bring the band up, also when doing this exercise, common challenge is bruising, especially on the tricep. This exercise probably causes it more than any other exercise. So one way to help avoid that is have them put the band not on the tricep like so, but have it more towards the elbow, so it's a little bit more on the bone and it's less likely to bruise. I'm not saying it won't bruise, but it's not gonna be nearly as severe. So that is a great way of, of focusing on that. 
And then from here, as we execute this exercise, look also to see that my hand is lined with the elbow. And I'm pushing the band up over my eyes, just like an incline press, and then stretching. Right over the eyes, and then stretching. Now, double time in this exercise. Pretty much all the upper body exercises, it's full extension, and then halfway down. So completion of the exercise, and then halfway down is the ultra blast. Pop. Four, three, two, and down. Okay, that's the long tube incline press and how to do it properly. Okay, finishing off the chest and the strength conditioning class, utilizing the bar. In this particular exercise, anytime you're standing, especially if you know feet are apart, you want to make sure the student has their knees slightly bent. I always talk soft at the knees. Also, if you notice, I have the wide grip. And if the student is on the UBC, this really is the grip you're going to want to have them use. But of course, we have students that are our maintenance programs that kind of move on and continue training with us. And at that time, they can vary their hand positioning to kind of work the muscles a little different. And this is one way to kind of change it up a little bit, bring it to the inside. If you notice, the band is on top of my hand. So when I do this exercise, I'm a little more and more inner chest as opposed to outer chest. Okay, I'm working more in the you know, cleavage area, which of course the gals like. Uh, double time in this, again, like them all, this particular exercise, full extension, halfway down and back. Again, we call this the Ultra Blast. All right, let's move on to the back. And again, what we're doing here is just making sure that as you go through these exercises that you're doing them properly. The bands are incredibly effective uh, when it comes to resistance training, but they have to be done properly. If it's not done properly, you're not going to get the results. Your students aren't going to get the results. So instructors out there, you need to be really strict on this. You need to be looking around and making sure the student's doing it right because, you know, they're just not going to get the results. And then, of course, they're not going to blame themselves for not doing it right. They're going to blame you and the workout. So we're going to talk about the back right now, moving on to the uh, long tube one arm row. Again, let's talk about the wrap on this. You're going to take the, paint, the, the tube, put it on top of your toe, and then wrap it under, under, okay? And from there, real important, because again, these bands can only stretch so far, you wanna make sure that the student gets full, or you get full elasticity from the band before you anchor it, okay? Common mistake is to step on it too soon, you're not getting the full elasticity, and then you're shirt, and that makes it easier for the band to snap. All right, now let's talk about this exercise. I'm gonna give you a couple perspectives, for one, from here so we understand where we are. We're letting the shoulder move forward. We're making sure the right hand is down in line with the left knee. Hand is on the hip. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling the band back. And as I do this, I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together and really pulling those shoulder blades back and, 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 and stretching and, and sit, uh, standing up straight. And then from down and then back. This is the actual motion. What are the mistakes? One is that, again, not a deep enough stance. At all time, and almost pretty much all of the exercises, there's no time that the band should be loose, okay? But if a student is kind of just standing like so, they get to the whole point where they're not really doing a whole lot. Their body's not in proper alignment. They're really not getting to the back area that they're looking to, to work. So they've got to get a good stagger step. And I always like to say it's kind of like, you know, starting one of those old lawnmowers. From here all the way back. So this is the motion. Again, good stagger step to make sure we focus on the proper body, body part. Now again, the double time, all the way back, halfway, okay? Good, <laughs> ultra blast, three, two, and down. Another thing to remember in all the exercises, it's real important, that the student is failing on that third set. You know, with the bands, we do a lot of reps, and it's kind of easy to kind of get lost in those reps not focus on achieving what you're trying to achieve. You've got to make sure when they do those first two sets, they get done with the, the ultra blast, the double time, that they feel that, that they really need that five to 10 second rest. And then when we talk about failing, failing does not mean I can't move it anymore. Failing means if the range of motion is to here, you know, excuse me, full range of motion is to here, they may only be able to bring it back to here. That's failure. That means the muscle is so tired that they're not capable of pulling it all the way back. That's what you want. If the student's doing the last set and the last three or four, and they're coming all the way back, they may be talking to the neighbor as they do it. I love one of my instructors will take one of the higher, more colored bands and just go set it next to them. 
or really kind of emphasize to that person, hey, you need to go up. Because again, in resistance training, you have to constantly challenge yourself or the body just isn't gonna change. All right, we're now down here to continue on the back. Working with, again, still long tube. This is one, this is the easiest way, in my opinion, to prepare for the row. Put the ball, put the uh, band on top of the shin, bring it to the inside. Locking the legs out, shoulder width. Palms down, again, good erect back, squeezing the shoulder blades together, all the way back, all the way forward. Again, this is the full range of motion, and things you wanna avoid the student doing, that's rocking back and forth. This is one of those exercises that's kind of really difficult to do it properly. Now, double time, ultra blast, all the way back, halfway. Again, we're always finishing the flex. Flexing that muscle, squeezing the muscle, all the way to hopeful failure on the last set. Okay, now the third one, we have two options. We have, if you don't have the bar, it's really easy to change this up and not even use the bar. Not even really necessary, really, even though it's in the manual. Basically, just take the band, and instead of coming straight back, just go wide with it, this motion here. So it's pretty much the same exercise, except for this is gonna be more middle, lower back. This is gonna be more upper back deltoids and tricep uh, traps. Moving on to one of my favorite body parts when it comes to the bands, and that's the shoulders. I just think, I just think it's great how the bands can work the shoulders, because you know, being 47, and I still like to piddle around the weight room, uh, and I just avoid the shoulders. So they definitely, you know, studies have shown that as far as rotator cuff and injury, weights, especially for guys over 50, uh, can be detrimental easily hurt yourself. So with the bands, boy, I tell you, you can really just fatigue that muscle, have it fail, but the chance of injury is rather slim. Love the bands. Now, a couple things on this one. Single foot anchor. Making sure that it's evenly distributed. A couple of things that I see. Making sure the student doesn't lean back. So as we bring the band up, what you don't want to see is this. See how my back is leaning? That puts a lot of stress on my lower back. I want to make sure the student, if I always tell my students to tighten their abs, by tightening their abs, they can't help but you know, crunch a little bit forward, making sure they're not leaning back and putting that excess stress in the lower. So as you're doing the shoulder press, you wanna make sure, again, hands here. If you notice, I, I kinda like to keep my hands closed. I don't tighten up a lot. One thing you wanna emphasize with your students in any of these type of exercises, especially in the upper body, is to relax their neck. How many times a student will say, boy, my neck is sore. Because with the bands, you have a tendency to tense the entire body, which is good because it works the entire body, even though you're, not, you're focusing on the, on the shoulders or other body parts. But the neck gets fatigued. So ask your students, focus, and tell them to relax the neck. So as we push this straight up, we're coming right over. Again, when we do this, we're not quite touching, and we're coming all the way down parallel to the shoulders, all the way up, all the way down. And as you're doing this, the things again we talked about, you want to make sure a student's not leaning back, putting pressure on that lower back. Double time, ultra blast, all the way up, halfway down. This is the motion. And if they do it properly, whoo, they definitely will feel that. Okay, moving on now to the shoulder flies. Another great exercise. There's quite a few things I want to focus on this exercise. One is, again, there should be tension on the band at all times. I see this a lot. Okay, that's not what you're doing. When you're doing this, you want complete tension at all times. So it comes up, but when we come back down, we still feel the tension of the band. Also making sure, if you notice when I do the band, I'm leading with the back of my hand. My goal is to get as high as I can, but no higher than parallel with my shoulders. Once I start getting this high, I'm starting to put too much stress on the shoulder. If the student comes about three quarters of the way up, that's okay, too. Other mistakes, this, this, okay, you want to make sure again, palms out, good stagger step. Now you have some variety here. The more I lean forward, the more I'm going to be working the posterior deltoids, in other words, upper back and, and the back of your shoulders. The more I stand erect, the more I'm going to work more the medial, the side of the shoulder. So depending what the student wants. You know, a lot of people want to get more of a rounded shoulder, then they're going to want to stand up a little bit more erect as they do the exercise. If they're trying to really get the traps and the upper back, they're going to want to go a little bit more forward. Okay? 
And when we're doing this, the double time, this is a real important double time, your range of motion is gonna be a little shorter. I don't do quite halfway down, because even the full range of motion is pretty much halfway down. So on the ultra blast, it's all the way up and really just a pump. We're really just coming down two or three inches, three, two, down, as opposed to coming you know, halfway down and halfway up. You really want that student, I see almost itromesque exercise, almost just hold it with a little bit of movement. And I tell you, that's just a great exercise. Like I said, I love the shoulders with the bands. All right, working on the final exercise for the shoulders, utilizing the bar. A couple mistakes that I see. One is when you anchor this, you don't want to put your knees on the band. You're actually putting your knee inside the loop. So when the loop, when you put, you're in a proper position, and I'll show you this way, it's loose between my toes and my knee. I'm not actually having my knee on the band. That's a common mistake. Here, you know, I usually like the wide grip. I think it's just designed for that, and I think it's a better grip, and we want to stick with that. I don't really vary it on this particular exercise. We come up, making sure that you keep the bar in front of you. When you bring the bar behind you, and that's an exercise that's really, you know, kind of old school, it definitely puts way too much stress on the shoulders. So you want to make sure that you keep the bar in front of the student, all the way up, all the way down. Another common mistake is leaning too far back. Again, stress on the lower back. We want to try to keep the body erect, come all the way down below the chin, and fully lock in the arms as I'm doing this exercise. And of course, double time, again, I always like to think coming back down to about the top of the head. You know, basically halfway down all the way up, but always, again, completing and locking. And I always say this, lock, lock, instead of counting three, two, one. I'll tell them because I really want to lock in those elbows. Three, two, lock, lock, and down. Especially that last one, I always like to really emphasize it. Because again, what, what's the goal? Failure. We want those muscles to feel it. All right, moving on to the triceps. This is another exercise that I think is actually better with the bands than I do with weights. You know, not that I have big triceps, but I just seem to get better results with the bands. Now, if you notice, I have two of them. You know, there are times, and this is one of the one few exercises I've been doing this for so long, that I'm actually having to double up on bands to be able to get the results I'm looking for. And I guess the only reason I'm showing this, I'm not trying to show off, but to emphasize to you coaches and instructors out there that there's never a time where, okay, I'm strong enough. You know, if you're not getting enough uh, resistance out of a purple band, because this is, you know, you basically get the full range of motion, full elasticity of this band. So, you know, doubling up is not that impressive. But the point being is, if I was just to use one band, I wouldn't get as the resistance I'm looking for. So. What's so important with your students is that you're always asking them to do more. And if you do that, you know, as much people like to think the body gets tired of exercise and you need to mix it up, I think mind gets uh, tired of before the body does because if every time you're working out, you're asking your body to do more, you're gonna get results. I did these classes for a solid two years and just got tremendous results. It was more my mind that would fade during the workout than it was me having to mix it up to get the results I'm looking for. So. When we're doing this, of course, we're gonna have the students uh, put the, the band down on the floor and then step on it. Now, they step on the band and then step through. This is not a deep stagger step. The main thing is the student must realize, and I've seen this happen before, mistakes, where they don't realize that they're anchoring with that back foot, they pull the band up and the thing comes flying up. Now, from here, real important, we take the band and that we shoot it straight up over the head. All right, the band is just touching my upper back I take my other hand and I'm stabilizing the elbow, all right, with the tricep. And then I'm bringing a, coming down to a 90 degree angle bend and then a full extension. 90 degree angle bend and then locking it out. Three, two, and then of course our ultra blast is going to lock halfway down, all the way up. And again, this is kind of one of those where you're really pumping and really making sure you're locking. It's three, two, lock, and down. Okay, great exercise. Moving on to the Mac Daddy of tricep exercises. As I like to say, this exercise is worth the price of admission by itself. And that is the figure eight tricep extension. This is just a great exercise, but also one that is done uh, incorrectly a lot of the time. Mainly because it's just so hard, uh, people try to modify it to make it easier on themselves. Now, first thing you wanna do with this particular exercise, palms are out, you bring it up. And then make sure you stretch the band. And then what you're doing, if you look to the side, you'll notice I'm just barely touching the back of my head. 
and that stabilizes the band. That's a huge difference between the, the stabilizing on the back of my head and having it uh, loose. One thing, loose, it gets real unstable on itself. Plus, I'm going too far back, and I think it puts way too much stress on our shoulder. So we want to make sure that we have it where we're touching. Now, a quick note for safety. Make sure you or your students, when they pull it away from their hair, they also have it stretched. If you have it in close and then let it in, they're going to be cutting the hair out of this band, okay? Uh, you got to make sure, because that is a challenge. People bring it by their hair, and I think it's one reason they don't stabilize it like they should, because they're scared of it. All you have to do is make sure when you put it on your head, it's stretched, and when you pull it away from your head, it's stretched. You'll be fine, but you definitely want to stabilize the band so you do the exercise properly. Another thing is making sure, look at my elbows. These are, this is how you do it. This is incorrectly, and I see this all the time. This is not just triceps. This starts putting in the back and shoulders, a lot of different body parts. This is a tricep exercise. We're gonna isolate it. So our elbows stay static, stable. We're just bending it to a 90 degree angle and locking. And if you haven't been doing it like this, you're really missing out on probably the best tricep exercise you'll ever do. I mean, it's here and out, here and out. And again, another thing, you've got to emphasize that the student has to relax their neck. How many times I see them doing this exercise, I don't like this, okay? You've got to tell them, relax your neck, because again, they're gonna get that stiff neck and you know, what's wrong with me, my neck's so stiff, and it's from tensing up too much during this particular exercise and a couple of the other ones. So we're going from here again, just touch, stand up straight, 90, lock, and again, making sure, and again, I really like to emphasize, especially towards the end, lock it, lock it, double time. Again, we're, trying, we're coming at about halfway to, to halfway to halfway, and back out again, four, three, lock, 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 and then pull it away and down. When I put these exercises in order, after, again, if you do the uh, figure eight tricep extension, you're like, whoa, man, that was, you know, everybody goes, whoa, you know, when, when the, the set's over, if they're doing it properly. So I then put an exercise that's not easy in any way, shape, or form, but it's a little easier not to kill yourself with. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's just one of those exercises that really isolates the muscles and pumps it and is a great exercise, but not quite as challenging as the one we just did. Now, again, common mistake, not deep enough stagger step. Real important that you have tension the entire time as you do the tricep kickback. And again, a common mistake is this. See how the band gets kind of loose? I really don't have tension the whole time. Another misunderstanding of this exercise is we're not doing this exercise. We're not bending the elbows at a 90 and shooting them straight back. We're actually having the elbows almost completely locked, not quite, a slight bend. We put tension on the band, and then, again, with a good stagger step, we're pushing the arms back and maintaining tension the entire time. And if you notice, the palms are going back, or even slightly turned in, but not much. And four, three, two. And this is another one of those exercises that doesn't come halfway down, halfway up, because we're, our range of motion is already pretty short. We're going all the way up and just pumping it. We're just trying to get that range of motion, almost an isometric exercise of four, three, two, and down. So again, common mistakes on this, not deep enough stagger step, having the student or yourself going loose with the band, bending the elbows and doing this exercise. And again, when you do it this way, band ends up becoming loose. You want a good stagger step, almost arms almost locked, and the whole time pushing them back, and double time, just pump it. And I tell people, if you do this exercise right, by the end, it feels like someone's punching you right in the tricep. Moving on to the last tricep exercise. You know, things evolve, uh, like anything else. And one thing I will say about the strength and conditioning classes, you know, boy, I tell you, they really have lasted the test of time. Uh, they, they've been really effective for, for many, many years. But there are some times I'd like to make changes, and this is one of those. In the manual, and even on the DVD, a lot of times see us utilizing the bar on this exercise. I've actually, over time, I think I prefer utilizing the band. Both are good, but the band, I think, gives you uh, just a little better pump, uh, gives you more variety of resistance. Now, of course, they, I think they're, they're coming out with the bar. You can exchange the different bands, but the thing is, I just, I just think it's a little better. Again, the band is loose, just like we talked about earlier when we did the shoulder press. So when we bring the band, what I like about the, just the band, we can bring the hands close together. So I bring them close together, I make a fist, and so I'm just crack, uh, bring my hands together. Elbows stay close to my ears as I come back to a 90 degree angle and back up. 90, up, 
things not to do, don't lean back, okay? Always breathe out an extension. We haven't been talking nearly enough about that. We're gonna breathe out an extension. Four, three, two, and then again, we go all the way up, halfway down, pop it. Four, three, two, lock, and then down. Okay, great exercise. And after doing all the other tricep exercises, whoa, will that finish your triceps off right. Finishing off with the last body part in the upper body workout, and that's the biceps. These exercises are pretty easy to understand. Again, we do a double foot anchor. Again, make sure we have full elasticity of the band. Common mistake here, and it's really not that common because the bands, what I, another thing I love about the bands, you just don't have the tendency or the desire to cheat as you do with the weights. You need to get someone with a barbell doing curls, and if they can't get it all the way up, they start bringing all the other body parts in and start leaning back and put excessive stress on the lower back, it really can hurt themselves. I mean, a herniated, herniated disc in the weight room is not uncommon. To where the bands, it just doesn't seem the body wants to do that. But be aware of it, somebody might now just start to lean back. And again, we're putting too much stress on the back, compressing those uh, discs, and that's just not a good thing. So make sure, again, tighten the abs. If you get the students to kind of tighten their abs up, they just won't do that. You can't tight, you can't arch your back and tighten your abs. It's difficult to do. So I always talk in tight abs, all right? Not really compressing, you know, here, crunch abs, but just tight abs. As we do this, this is also misunderstood. I created the, the, the order in which these bicep exercises are done and for a reason. Now, when we do the first bicep curl, you want to come all the way up, full range of motion up, complete flexion on the bicep, and then three quarters of the way down. Again, we're simulating a barbell uh, bicep curl. So three, all the way up, down, all the way up, down. And you're saying, well, you're not locking your elbows like you're supposed to. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. And now double time is gonna be all the way up and halfway down. So this is your double time, okay? We like to call it ultra blast. Three, two, down, all right, great exercise. But what even makes it better is your next exercise, you go to a stagger step. And again, talking about the deep stagger step. One of the biggest mistakes is students not getting a deep enough stagger step. I mean, a lot of times their legs aren't strong enough and they get fatigued. And that's okay, as they strain with you, they'll get stronger, but get them in a deep stagger step. Now, we talked about, hey, we didn't get full extension. Well, I don't know how long you've worked in a weight room, but one of my favorite curls is an incline brush, <laughs> incline uh, bench, uh, what we call sing, uh, swinging curls, where you get on an incline bench and you swing the barbell or dumbbell and then bring the weight up. And what it does, it makes you fully stretch the bicep. And this exercise does that. And we're simulating that motion. So we're coming only halfway up. So we're not even coming all the way up full range of motion. Halfway up, what you really want to emphasize, watch. See where I fully extend and almost in a swinging motion. So what I'm doing now is I'm stretching the bicep and also working right at the beginning of the bicep, right at the, right at the connector right there into the elbow. You know, that's, I tell you, if you do this, you haven't done this properly, and you do it like I'm gonna show you, I guarantee you about a week, you know, a couple days after you do this, you're gonna go, wow, am I sore right there? Because most people, when they do a bicep, they have constant flexion on the muscle, and they just, you know, tighten it up, tighten it up. They never stretch it. And this exercise should stretch the bicep. So the motion's here, halfway up, full extension. See how the arm's locking and stretching. I'm actually kind of a little bit swing. You know, and I even turn my hand out a little bit to make sure of it. And then the uh, Ultra Blast, we go back to all the way up, halfway down. Okay, that's just a great combination between the first, you know, bar bicep curl and then the stagger step bicep curl. You know, I almost took this exercise out of the manual. Because really, out of all the exercises you do, this is the most dangerous. And it's not because the exercise is all that hard. It's just that sometimes we get um, absent-minded and we'll forget to point the toe when we do this exercise. And what can easily happen as you do the bicep curl, the band can come back and either smack you in the head or even worse, smack you in the eye. And it's happened to a couple of my students over the last 10 years. They don't have a big a challenge now because we just crush it as far as emphasizing to my instructors, my coaches, not only check your own foot, but check your partners. Because this takes, you know, an absent-mindedness of one rep, and boom, it come back, can, comes back and gets you. Uh, you really want to make sure you uh, emphasize this with your students. And those of you doing this, you've got to make sure that you point. If you notice, point the toe. Now, if I have a good shoe on, 
you know, that has a good arch area, then the, the, the band kind of naturally hooks. But you get people who wear walking shoes or other shoes that don't have that, and it's very easy for that to slide off. So you really want to make sure, you know, everybody needs a point because you can still slide off of this one. And I always like to just tuck the other foot in. Again, I've got my back I'm basically sitting up straight. I like to stabilize the muscle. A couple of mistakes on this particular exercise is I see a lot of people want to bring it on over, okay? Well, that's wrong, but also making sure that it comes straight to the shoulder is, is wrong. You want to go with the natural flexion of your arm. In other words, you know, what feels right to you? And for most people, it's going to be a little bit of a happy medium between the two. You're just curling your arm, guys. One thing about it, say, well, this works in a different way. Any muscle, whether it's the bicep, tricep, doesn't matter, or muscles, you can only make them bigger or smaller. You can't shape them. You can't do an exercise a certain way to shape the muscles, a muscle a certain way. You can only increase muscle mass and reduce body fat. That's it. So by trying to change the, the way you do it really isn't doing much. We're just trying to work the muscle. Tension on the band at all times coming up. And again, as far down as you can. And then double time comes again. Flexion. Again, this is going to be more of those pump ones as opposed to having to come halfway down. Because if you go too far down again, you're going to get uh, the band to kind of loosen up. You want tension the entire time, uh, like with all the exercises. Hallelujah, last exercise, okay, our last uh, uh, exercise for the biceps, but also the last exercise for the upper body, and that is the bicep curl utilizing the band. Again, double foot anchor. Now, if you have someone who's on the UBC, it means they're charting their progress, and if you are on the UBC, or if you're a coach or an instructor with the UBC, you want to make sure that student has their book open, and that every time they do an exercise, all it is is circle, circle, and at the end, they rate how that felt. And, and you know, we'll get to you know, talk so much about this and we'll do it more in the future uh, on why that's important. You know, it's not just the fact they know what they did last time, but also keeps them engaged. Now, the bicep curl, you have a variety of hand positionings. You can bring it inside, you can go outside. But if the student is currently involved in the UBC, they want to be consistent all the way through the UBC so they get an idea of where they are so it's consistent. You can change it up after you're done. Again, just a basic bicep curl all the way up. I only go three quarters of the way down. Again, on this exercise, because this particular band, you're limited on resistance sometimes, you can roll it for added resistance. Another little trick is you can extend your elbows out. The more you extend your elbows, the more challenging it's gonna be. Double time again is gonna be all the way up, halfway down. Four, three, two, and that's a wrap. All right, upper body, strength and conditioning. I hope you learned something and have a great workout and stay focused, finish strong, and you know, hey, what better place? You know, the UBC, strength and conditioning class. The only time failure is a good thing.